Hello, welcome to another edition of Capra Comparison Picks. I'm Ranch. Today I'll be giving you the Capra Comparison Picks for UFC London. Aspinall versus Tybura. Aspinall. <laughs> but anyway, uh, these are some select fights from, I think they're all main card fights, I do believe. Select fights from the card that I was on the fence. I could go either way, so I decided to do a Capra Comparison Pick show to find out which way I want to go. So let's kick this off, starting with the first fight. We have the featherweight fight between Lerone Murphy, the miracle Lerone Murphy, taking on Josh Coolibau. Kuya, Kuya Coolibau. Um, who's the favorite? Lerone Murphy's the favorite. Uh, these odds are from yesterday when I was gonna film this. Off of Bet Online, you can check. They might have changed a little bit. I haven't checked today, but yesterday were minus 130 for Laurel Murphy, and Coolibel comes back at a plus 110. Now that did move when I opened the lines opened up on Sunday on Bet Online. I mean, on Sunday they were minus 160 for Murphy, minus one th or plus 130 for Josh Bell. So that means money's been coming in on Josh Coolibau. So there was line movement there. Keep that in mind when you're, if you're on the fence like me and could go either way. So let's talk about the favorite, Lerone Murphy. Lerone Murphy, 12-0-1 draw. In his last five, he is 4-1 draw. Most recently, he beat uh, Gabriel Santos by split decision. Before that, he took out Maquan Americani. Americani's now since been cut from the UFC. Just uh, happened like, I want to say two or three months ago he got cut. But he took him out with a knee. 12 seconds in round two for Lerone Murphy over Maquan Americani. Awesome. Uh, before that, Douglas Silva de Andrade. He beat him by unanimous decision. He beat Ricardo Hamosh. Ground and pound. Round one. Fantastic, Lerone Murphy. Fantastic. And before that, he did have his draw, but that was his UFC debut. Keep that in mind. And it was against Zabira Tukagov. Very good fighter, Zabira Tukagov. So, and the UFC debut, can't, can't bitch about that. You know, that's no shame in that. Draw. You know, at least he hasn't, doesn't have, his O is still there. No losses. No losses for Lerone Murphy. He does have a half-inch reach advantage. Cooley Bow got a one inch height advantage, interesting enough. Um, Leroy Murphy, 32 years old. Cooley Bow, 29. So both hovering right around the uh, prime age, 30. 30 is like, or you know, people say below, yeah, less than 30 is, is the real prime, depending on the weight class, I guess. Featherweight, I like, I like late 20s, early 30s as the prime age of of top performance. In my opinion, that's just, I'm, who am I? Nobody, ranch. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, Laurel Murphy on Instagram has been training out of Manchester top team with the likes of um, Rob, the uh, Halayaya, BJJ Black Belt. That's on Instagram, check it out. The coach over there is Ravi Daglarayov. Uh, Dagestani coach, so you got to figure Mar Manchester top team got that Dagestani wrestling working in there, and then he's been training with a guy named Abraham Babley, the big AB. He's a PFL fighter, decent one too. Coincidentally, fight day is Lerone Murphy's birthday. Birthday boy, happy birthday, Lerone Murphy. That's when he'll be 32 on fight day, Saturday. That's right, but he's taking on. It's not going to be a not going to be a walk in the park easy birthday victory because he's got Kuya, Josh Coolibau. Josh Coolibau underestimated a lot coming in, a lot of his fights, but he's only lost one time, and that was to um, Jalen Turner in his UFC debut five fights ago. But he lost to Jalen Turner in the debut. By ground and pound, round two. Yeah, that's not the way you want to lose. But regardless, after that, he had that draw against Charles uh, Air Jordan by split decision. Well, split draw. It was a draw, so it wasn't those split decisions. It was a draw. 
prior to that, or after that, he beat uh, Shailan Nurdambieke, unanimous decision. Followed that up with a great win over Sungwoo Choi, split decision. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, I was sour because I picked Sungwoo Choi. I bet Sungwoo Choi, my Koreans, <laughs> you know. But Josh Koulibau, I, I give him that. He should have won that. I, it shouldn't even been a split. It should have been probably unanimous. Koulibau did it. His wrestling just overcame some which way in that. But anyway, after that, he uh, had a rear naked choke against Melsic, the gun, Bogdasarian, who just got away with a robbery victory last week. But that's for a different discussion come Friday night. Maybe I'll mention it. But yeah, Melsic, Bogdasarian. Uh, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> I, yeah, that, he, should, he shouldn't have won that. But anyway, whatever. Uh, Josh Koulibau took care of him with a rear naked choke round two. Didn't even let it go to the judges. That a boy, Josh Koulibau. Uh, Josh Koulibau has been training at uh, Igor MMA Academy and Falcon Kickboxing Club, which I think they're both like uh, associated together because you see the coaches at, at uh, Igor in the same pictures as Josh Koulibau at the um, Falcon Kickboxing Club. And the coaches are Alan Philpot and Johnny Barra Bonavitas. Also, Josh Koulibau will be putting a little work in with Jamie Malarkey over there in Australia. So, interesting. Could go, in my opinion, still still tight. I don't know which way to go, but uh, let's see if the, ju the judges, uh, I never listen to them, but let's see if the cappers I use this week can sway me one way or another in this fight. I will add, Lerone Murphy is uh, one of my unranked contender picks from my contest we had in uh, way back in January with MMA Jesus 420, BC Dave, and some members of the chat. We all checked it out. It's in my history of videos. It was during an off week, but anyway, um, Lerone Murphy was one of was one of my featherweight. Un you get two two people unranked, two people. In each weight class, and if they proceed into the top 15 and get ranked, you get points. At the end of the year, a person with the most points gets a prize. Last year, BC Dave won it, and he I gave him I got him a um, nice walkout jacket. But anyway, Lerone Murphy, Josh Coolyball, starting with the favorite Lerone Murphy. We've got Sheer Dog. That's um. Shillian, Shillin, Keith Shillin, and Duffy. I think Duffy's first name might be... Man, I keep wanting to say Ed, but it's not Ed. I know a guy named Ed Duffy. It's not him. But anyway, both guys, Shillin and Duffy from Sure Dog, are on the side of Lerone Murphy. Also taking Lerone Murphy is the MMA guru. MMA guru from the UK, but he assures he is not biased. And that is true because some of these picks... Um, some of the picks he made on his program were against the uh, UK home 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 fighter. You know what I mean? To, in this case, Lerone Murphy is the UK. He's going to have the home beat. The crowd is going to be behind him. Josh Koulibau from Australia. Uh, also, we have Cody from Blood Money MMA Bets. Blood Money Cody. Good buddy of mine. Also on Lerone Murphy. His friend Johnny K, our friend Johnny K, also on the Ron Murphy. And finally, the boys from the Fight Night Picks programming, the Allen brothers, Matt and Craig Allen, both agree the Ron Murphy should get the win here, making this a full capper consensus. Ugh. It's been a while since I had one of these doing these tight fights, but a full Capricorn consent. Come on, a full Capricorn consensus is when what? What, Nora? You tell tell the people. Pick one person on the thing. You're right, and in this case, everybody's picking. What's that name say? Murphy. Murphy, correct. Lerone Murphy to beat Josh Coolibau. <laughs> Kuya, Coolibau. Thanks, baby. So. Full capper consensus on this fight, which kind of blows me away. But but realistically, I do know other cappers that are taking Josh Koulibaly. I just 
I didn't feature him on this week's programming. I can only fit five. Broke bets, those guys on Josh Coulibau. There's a couple others too, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Anyway, oh, I hate going against Kappa Consensus. And since, you know, it's gonna, you know what the, the deal is for me? Um, Laurel Murphy, home crowd advantage. And it's his birthday. And he has zero losses. I think he's going to do enough to get it done over Josh Coulibau. But I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Coulibau takes him to a decision. But I think when he gets a decision, even if Josh Coulibau has more significant strikes, the judges, the crowd, the birthday boy is going to get the nod. Robbery or not, Laurel Murphy is going to win it. Unless Josh Coulibau takes him out. And I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think he's going to take him out by submission. Or knock him out. I mean, if, if there's a if he's gonna do either of those, it would be I would think submission. But um, no, I, I'm taking Laurel Murphy by decision. Move it on. Next we have the Black Country Banger, Jai Herbert. Black Country Banger, not because he's black and from the country. Black Country is a part of England. They call it the Black Country. That happens to be where he's from. So Jai Herbert, Black Country Banger taken on Faraz Ziam, the Smile Killer. I love that nickname, by the way. To be smiling until you come up against the Faraz Ziam. And boy, this is another, like all these fights, tight. That's why I put them up here. You know, on the fence. That's what, when I'm picking, when I'm going looking through the card, I'm like, which fights, okay, I'm taking that person, that person, that person, that person. This person, I, you know, I take the ones and, or they're, the line is so wide that the whole world is taking the favorite, you know? So I don't put them on here because I know all these guys are going to pick the same side. For example, like Tom Aspinall. I don't know anybody taking Marcin Tybura. Not a, not, no, no, not a nobody. Not that I've watched yet. But anyway, um, back to this, Jack Herbert. 12, 4, and 1 comes in as a slight underdog here. Plus 135, taking on Fraziam. 13 and 4, minus 155 favorite. The over under is set at uh, over 2.5 is minus 150. So the bookies think it's going to go to decision slightly. And. Um, <laughs> Under two and a half, plus 120. If you think it's going to get finished, you're going to earn a little bit of extra money. There's no juice there. But uh, Jai Herbert, Black Country Banger. No, let's start with the favorite. That's how I like to start with the favorites. We'll do the underdogs second. Faraz Ziam, Smile Killer. 13-4, uh, coming off a win over Michael Figlack. Unanimous decision before that. Wow, Terrence McKinney. Phew. Rear naked choke round one. I think it was... Rather, kind of early. No, I, I'm not sure. I don't think... I know he got finished rear naked choke round one. And it, it, was, it, tore, it broke my heart. Um, before that, he did beat Luigi Vendramini. Majority decision. I think that's the when Luigi Vendramini hung up his gloves. I don't know if he retired right there, but he hasn't fought since that fight, I don't think. Prior to that, he uh, beat Jamie Malarkey. Unanimous decision. And before that, he had his UFC debut against Don Madge, where he did lose a to Don Madge by unanimous decision. Fraziam is fighting out of L Lyon, France. Uh, Climax Fight Academy. Climax. Whenever <laughs> I don't even know. I was going to go there somewhere. But uh, you check out his Instagram. Very interesting here. Check out Fraziam's Instagram, okay? Um, he's been training with a glory kickboxing champion, like... A big kickboxing champion guy named Jonathan Mayezo. Uh And then he's been also training with a KSW double, a champ champ, double champion, 17-1 and one record, Saladin Parnas. Saladin. But it's like Salah hyphen capital D. Saladine? Saladine Parnas? I don't know, but the dude's good. Double, a champ champ over at KSW. Um, and... Then, very interestingly, if you go back, uh, it was 10 weeks ago, but still, it's within, it's like, yeah, 10 weeks, 10 weeks, I'd probably not, might be this camp though, because I'm pretty sure it is, because the, there was a post before this that it showed Jai Herbert Frasiam, the 
like the picture of you know, the versus picture. But anyway, he was in Luxembourg training. And guess who he's training with in Luxembourg? It's on his Instagram. Verify if you want. Check it out. Kamzat. Kamzat Shamaya. That's right. He's been training. He was training with Kamzat in Luxembourg. I don't know if it was gearing up for this, but nevertheless, Frasiam, smile killer, is putting it in. I, his Instagram was very impressive. Jai Herbert, black country banger. He's coming off a draw against Ludovic Klein. Um, and Ludovic Klein, you know, he's pretty, I think he's pretty good. He's had his high points and his low points too. That I would say the draw against uh, Jai Herbert was more of a low point than a high point. Before that, he beat Kyle Nelson, unanimous decision. He lost uh, to Ilya Tupuria, um, right hook round two. But I remember round one, everybody was impressed because they thought they thought Jai Herbert was going to get finished round one. Jai Herbert not only survived round one, I think he had a knockdown on Ilya Tupuria, the Mr. You know, top top shelf of the weight class, Ilya Tupuria. But to Jai Herbert. That was the one where Patty Pimblett threw the <laughs> the hand. The it was the last time they fought. There was a London fight. It seems like Jai Herbert only fights in London. I wonder if that's a reason for that. But uh, Patty Pimblett threw the hand sanitizer at Ilya Tupuria in the hotel. It's a big. There's a little side story there. But anyway, um, Jai Herbert did. I think get, he might have got a knockdown or he landed a nice head kick. He did something. Something in the first round that really impressed a lot of people. Then round two, Ilya Tupuria came out and was like, enough of this bullshit. And um, took care of him with the right hook. Uh, prior to that, he beat Kama Worthy. Hooks to ground strikes. Uh, about halfway through round one. The beginning of the first round. And prior to that, he lost to Hanato Moikano. Rear naked choke round two. So he's been a win-loss, win-loss, draw type or actually lost win, lost win, draw type of guy in his last five. It's not a pattern. Um, his last fight was a draw though, so I don't know. Does the pattern's not, it's fucked up now. But um, these guys, same height, but um, Jai Herbert actually with a two inch reach advantage. I think it's 70, 77 or 79 inch, I forget. But uh, he's got a little two inch reach advantage there. He trains out of Renegade BJJ. Over there in England, or yeah. Um, so, man, this is another one. That's why I put it on the board. I don't know. I'm I'm caught between a Black Country Banger and Frosty M. I will say something that does count for something. This is a lightweight fight, 155 pounds. Jai Herbert, wrong side of 30, 35. Frosty M, 26. What a beautiful age for. The Frenchman, Fras, Ziam. That's that's something to consider in this fight. Um, let's see. Hope this marker works. Starting with the favorite and Fras Ziam, we've got. Uh, oh, the fight night pick boys are split. Fight night pick. So oh, this marker is too smudgy. Too smudgy. Fight Night picks Craig, the older brother. This marker doesn't even work. Craig Allen is on the side of Frosty Am. Where his brother, Jesus Christ with these markers. His brother, Matt is on Jai Herbert. There's a nice one. So that's interesting. Split pick from the Allen brothers here. Then sticking over on the same side as Jai Herbert since I'm right here. We got um, Johnny K. Johnny says Jai Herbert should get the decision here. Okay. Might as well stay here. Because Cody, blood money, they do a show. I don't know if it's tonight or Thursday night. Tonight or tomorrow they do a live stream show. I try to get in, but life for Ranch is freaking hectic after work. 
Blood Money, also on the side of Jai Herbert. We've got the MMA Guru taking the Black Country Banger. This is the one he's like, I know he's from the UK, but I'm not biased here. Whatever. And finally, the Sure Dog, Keith Schillen and Duffy. Schillen and Duffy. That's the Sure Dog guys. By the way, all these cappers, their links will be in the description. I urge you to check their shows out. This is where I get the information. If you think I'm fine, check them out for yourself. And I only use cappers that I respect and think they know what they're talking about. Otherwise, why waste my time watching their crap? But these guys all seem to, they're very respectful and they know what they're talking about. Every single one of these guys. Um, so there's all five cappers, Fight Night Pick Boys, Johnny K, Blood Money, Guru, and Sure Dog guys. So three, two, four is your, the cap majority edges out for Jai Herbert, but uh, Ranch is going with the Frenchman. I know it's like, oh, Jai Herbert's the home team too. But yeah, but you know what? France isn't that far from England, so it's not like Frossiem's not going to have anybody there to support him. I, I just like, uh, I like that he's been, he had some work. He's putting in work with, with the KSW champ champ, the glory kickboxing champ, and Kanza. Love that. And uh, yeah, I like Frossiem here. Against Black Country Banger. Um, I'm getting pissed off these markers. These markers are starting. Oh, make me fierce. Pissed off. Okay, anyway, sorry. Sorry about that. Frost Ziam is my pick. I don't think he's got the power to get the knockout over Herbert, but he might, though. He's been. Putting in with that kickboxing guy, kickboxing champion. What's the guy's name? Jonathan Mayezo and Saladine Parnas. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna say inside the distance. So in the inside the distance. IDT. That's what that stands for. I used to put within distance W D, but so inside the distance, Frosium to get a finish. So there you go. Moving on, finally. We got Nathaniel Wood, the prospect. Ugh. People are like, he's, he's 29. He's gotta change his name because he's not a prospect. He's been in too long, which is correct. However, he's not changing it anytime soon. You go on Instagram and he's got his whole line of prospect academy clothing. Prospect Academy. It's not even. It's not even like you can't go train. It's just I don't know what what academy. There's not like a school. I want to go to the Prospect Academy. No, Nathaniel Wood. It's your just your your merchandise. Prospect. P A shows like a big P and an A. It's it's nice shirts, I guess. But yeah, he's been pawning those off. But uh, he's the favorite here. At minus one ninety. Taking on Andre Touchy Feely. Plus 165 with a record of 22 and 9. Interesting fight. Wood is 29 year old prospect. I guess I, I've seen worse. <laughs> you know, Andre Feely, 33. Um, both these guys have been in for a little bit, for quite a while. Uh, let's see here. We're going to start with Nathaniel Wood since the prospect is the favorite here. He's coming off a win against Air Jordan, Charles Jordan by unanimous decision. Before that, he beat Charles Hosa. Boston Strong, Charles Hosa, unanimous decision. Charles Hosa now owns his own gym down in Florida. Good on ya. Um, before that, he lost to uh, Casey Kenny, unanimous decision, Nathaniel Wood did. Prior to that, he beat John Castaneda, unanimous decision. Man, decision, 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 decision. The over is minus 240. So, the bookies also thinking decision here. And before John Castaneda, he did lose to none other than John Dodson. Dodson. John Dodson. Left hook to ground and pound. 16 seconds of round three. John Dodson. 
fantastic. That's, uh, that's, oh, that one, that's a red flag. I know it was back in like 2020, I think, maybe even 2019, so it was like three, four years ago around there, but it's not, that's not a loss you want to have on your resume. Um, Danny was training out of Great Britain top team with another guy on this card. Well, I don't know if he's training with him. Didn't show him on Instagram training shit except for wearing his shirt. And he's, yeah, he's hitting some pads, I guess, I think. And he's doing some, like, uh, you know, drills, like running sprints or something. He's doing he's doing something, but there's no, there's no like, training partner per se in any of his uh, Instagram videos. Because the only thing I wrote down was Mark Casey. He happens to be on this card fighting Joel Alvarez. Mark D. Casey goes to the same gym, Great Britain top team. So you imagine they got a, they're probably, you would imagine they're gearing up to help each other win at on their home turf in their backyard. But who knows? I didn't see it on Instagram. So anyway, Andre Feely, touchy Feely. He's been a corner block since he was a, you know, since he just started out. Team Alpha Male. Always been faithful Team Alpha Male. He's like always there too. You can go there anytime and see Andre Touchafili at Team Alpha Male. Um, he's coming off a win against Bill Algio. Split decision. That's a tough one. I remember I uh, I picked Bill Algio because he was a nice plus money. And I was, I, I was so close. I thought maybe he was going to get like a robbery decision. But uh, no, Andre Feely beat him. And it was justified too. It wasn't a robbery. He beat him. Um, before that, Joe Anderson Brito took care of him 41 seconds in round one. Ouch! Ouch, man. 41 seconds lost to Joe Anderson Brito, who's like 40 but lies and said he's, said he's like 30. But, <laughs> I mean, he just looks old, right? Joe Anderson Brito. But 41 seconds in round one. Maybe it's just an off night. I don't know what the hell happened there. Because before that, he uh, had no contest against Daniel Pineda because of a vicious eye poke. Prior to that, he lost, but it was to Bryce Mitchell by unanimous decision. This was Bryce Mitchell when he was thug nasty, when he was just uh, wrestling his way through the entire division, just beating up everybody. As of right now, Bryce Mitchell's dropped down a couple steps coming off loss. But um, prior to that, Andre Feely beat Charles Jordan. And Charles Jordan's been mentioned in every one of these fights at least once. Charles Jordan, Josh Cooley Bob, uh, had a draw with him. Let's see, Charles Jordan. Oh, he was not. Oh, because he's not. It wasn't a lightweight. But man, I thought maybe one of these guys. No. Nah. Okay, but anyway, Nathaniel Wood. Charles Jordan, unanimous decision. Andre Feely, Charles Jordan, split decision. When both these, both these guys, and every, all of them. Well, no, Josh Pulibaugh had a draw against Charles Jordan. Feely, Wood, both beat Charles Jordan. Interesting. Interesting. But anyway, so you use them as kind of a measuring stick if you want to. If you want to play MMA math the stupid way, Feely had a split decision. Nathaniel Wood had a unanimous decision. So that's a unanimous... <laughs> Nathaniel Wood should have the little edge because he, he won every round, right? Or won every score, uh, judge's scorecard, but... The judges are so freaking fire Chris Lee, fire Sal D'Amato. The other ones are alright, I have no problem with them. But Chris Lee and Sal D'Amato, they're they're in somebody's pockets. They're 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 in, I don't want to make claims like that. But anyway, back to this. Taking <laughs> Nathaniel Wood, the uh, minus well, almost two almost double your money favorite, minus one ninety. But uh I do like this fight. It's gonna be an exciting one. We've got uh, sure dog, Chillin, Keith Chillin, and Duffy. I man, what's his name? That's gonna it's gonna bug the shit out of me too. Duffy, it's not Ed. Uh, I have to watch it. I, no, I'm not watching it again. But we got MMA Guru also taking the prospect Nathaniel Wood. Blood money. But Blood Money said it's going to be tight, but he's going to lean Nathaniel Wood's way. Johnny K. A lot of these guys all said the same thing. Oh, it's going to... I would not be surprised if Philly comes away with victory, but 
They're going to go that way too. And both Fight Night Pick Brothers are up picking Nathaniel Wood, the prospect, by to win this, making this a full Kipper consensus two in one show. That doesn't happen much, especially recently. It happened before when I used to do every fight. Oh, like that's why I stopped doing favorites and heavy wide lines. A capper consensus pick again. Do the little cap of consensus dance. Throw some throw some good luck pearls to us. Yeah. But uh thank you, Nor. Yeah, everybody picked Nathaniel. What's this guy's last name? Wood. Would you? I would. But uh <laughs> Man, I'm gonna. The other thing is, I forgot to mention, Andre Feely, five inch height and five inch reach advantage. That may come into play here. If Philly can, and Philly likes to strike, and he's an alpha male, so you know, you know he's got wrestling too. I guess Nathaniel Woods got some underrated wrestling as well. But man, is is the British wrestling comparable to American wrestling? I'd argue the the Brits they don't enter anybody into the Olympics from the UK for wrestling. Just throwing that out there. It's not like they're known for their wrestling. They they are fantastic strikers and boxers, but are they known for wrestling? No. Andre Philly got the reach advantage, height advantage. I think probably better wrestling. I don't. I'm going against the Capper Capper consensus. I'm going to take. I'm gonna go out on the island by myself. I didn't see many, no, not of many people taking Andre Field. I don't, I don't recall any of them. I think the ones that I watched so far, I think everybody's been on Nathaniel Wood. But I'm going Andre Feely. Touchy Feely. <laughs> um, how? Well, probably decision, but uh, I'm nervous because the. Nathaniel Wood is the home team prospect, so he might, even if Philly beats him, significant strikes, control time, all that, those uh, judges might just be like, hey, this is Nathaniel Wood, it's a prospect, it's the boy. They might get, I just feel they might get robbed, but I'm going to go out on a limb, that plus money. I am a plus money junkie, right? Addicted to that plus money. Plus 160, I do have Plus Bunny Junkie t-shirts. Go check the, check my Teesprings page. Links in the YouTube homepage. Like if you, there's a there's a little thing on the, on the YouTube thing. You can buy a t-shirt. Uh, but anyway, I'm going with Andre Philly. So to recap. Time check. Time check indeed. Just a little bit over. So to recap, I've got Lerone Murphy with the full camper consensus beating Josh Kuya, Kuli Bao, Kuli Bao. Then I have Faraz Ziam inside the distance over Jai Con Black Country Banger, Jai Herbert, Faraz Ziam inside. I like that one. That's 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 a fun one. And finally, I'm going against the cappers. Out on an island by myself, but I don't care because I'm gonna get cash in at that plus. By the way, last weekend my three leg parlay from the show it hit, it hit, it hit. But this is this one. I'm hoping this will hit too. Of course, obviously, I'm taking Andre Feely, so I'm gonna parlay Andre Feely, Frosty um, and Lerone Murphy three leg parlay should be nice. Big plus money because Frosty owns a plus 165, and these guys are not far out, far out like wide lined favorites. So there you have it. Gather the info, place those bets, and cash those tickets. Tickets. Thanks for watching. Good luck on your bets. And uh, come Friday, man, I do have a dinner date on Friday. And I don't, I don't know what type of, I don't know what condition I'm going to be after dinner. So I don't know if the Friday night's going to happen, but fingers crossed. It might, it might. We'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe I'll finish dinner date early and come home, 
do my show, 9, 10 Eastern. Oh, this is Saturday, Eastern time, noon. Love it. Daytime fights. Daytime fights. <laughs> Daytime fights. Love that. So, um, and if you're out and like Dave, Dave will be setting the alarm to wake up from the night before to watch it. But I'll try to, you know what, Friday, I do want to talk about this card. So Friday, join me in the live stream. I'll make it a point to try to get to be home in time to do a late night live stream. So tune in Friday for that. Hope to see you guys then. Me and Dave will be there. Maybe, maybe a guest or something. But uh, thanks for watching. Good luck on your bets. See you next time.